Hi there guys, this is Simon from IV Audio, and in this video I'll be giving you a look at a Reaper script that I wrote recently to help me automatically name samples. Now before I start, I just want to let you know that this script is publicly available. I've been putting some stuff on GitHub recently, which should be interesting because I've never managed my own Git repository and I've no idea if I'm doing everything correctly or not, but as far as I can tell it's on GitHub and you should be able to download it no problem. So if this script seems like the kind of thing you're interested in, link should be on screen or in the description, go check it out. Now I'm just going to demonstrate what this script does. As you can see on screen, we've got a Reaper session and this little set of samples here, which has four dynamic levels and five round robins. We've got three microphone positions, each of which is named correctly. And if we have a quick zoom in, you can see that none of these items have any kind of interesting names. They all have the exact same name. Now these item names are what we're going to be leveraging to make naming samples a whole lot easier. So what does this script do? Well, let's select all of our items and run the sample namer. We get asked, how many dynamic levels do we have? Well, we've got four dynamic levels. We've got five round robins. And this will automatically insert the minimum and maximum velocity values and the round robin number into the file name. Then we have these three additional options. Read pitch from regions. This isn't technically pitch, it's just if you have your items inside of a region and this is set to true, it will take the region name and put it into the item name. Import track name is similar. It'll take whatever name the track is and put that in the file name. And lastly we have color dynamic levels, which will automatically color each dynamic level, each group of round robins, a different color, which is a nice visual representation to let you know that you've done everything correctly. It's important to note that you need to have the same number of round robins per dynamic level. If you've got five round robins for one dynamic level, you need to have five across all of them. So let's go ahead and run this script, and look at that. We've got colors for each of the dynamic levels. If we zoom in on some of these items, you can see we've got first the track name, then we've got hit C, which is the articulation, which is what I had in this region here. This is dynamic level 1, so we've got a minimum value of 1 and a maximum of 31. These are the actual velocity range that you want to map this to if you're doing it linearly across the velocity range. And that's all generated automatically, so you can have as many dynamic levels as you want, and these ranges will be generated correctly. And lastly, of course, we have the round robin number. You can see from the different tracks that the track name was correctly imported into all of the item names as well. And if we just have a scroll through some of these, you can see that here we've got our Red Robin 5 sample. If we move on to the next dynamic level, the velocity range is now 32 to 62. Red Robin 1, Red Robin 2, Red Robin 5, and then of course the last dynamic level, 94 to 127. So this is really useful. This makes mapping go really quickly because all of these tokens are 100% readable by contact. If you use these regions for pitch, you can literally render samples straight out of Reaper, drag them into contact, run one instance of auto map, which will recognize all of these tokens, and you can have all of your samples mapped to the correct pitch, to the correct velocity ranges, to the correct groups even, all automatically. So it makes things go really quickly. And in order to render these, I just need to select all of them again and open up the render window. I'm going to select selected media items. And in a previous video you might have seen, uh, we used wildcards like track and region in order to get the correct sample names. Well, in this case, the sample names are in the media item names. So all we need to do is use the item wildcard. And if we go ahead and render these to the desktop, and render all 60 files and have a look at them. Check that out. All of our samples, correct names, velocity values baked in, round robin numbers baked in, all done just like that. So I'm not going to be doing a coding talk through on the script for now. This is more of just a walkthrough of actual usage of the script. Again, if you want to use this script, if this seems like something to be useful, it's on GitHub. Link should be on screen or in the description. Uh, I am not a very good Lua coder, so if you have any questions, you should definitely check out XREM, 
He's a French programmer who has some amazing Reaper scripting tutorials. Uh, I'll have a link to his channel as well in the description. He also does custom scripts by request, so if you have any Reaper scripting needs, he is definitely the guy to go to. So that's it for today. As always, I hope this video has been somewhat useful, and thanks very much for watching.